With every new introduction of a new magic set, a new release, and of course understanding Wizards of the Coast's propensity to reprint magic cards, there are some cards you should be paying attention to, some cards that are a deal, and that is because they are being ignored by other factions of Magic the Gathering because of the new shiny things in front of them. In today's video, I'm going to share some of these cards with you, and guys, we're going to have a good time doing it. So stick around for this video, you're not going to want to miss it. Every new magic set brings along a new flavor of the month. And that means older cards can get lost, forgotten about until they're not. Or until another cool card comes along that makes us remember how awesome that card was to begin with. Welcome back everyone. MTG Moxman here. Thanks again for hanging out with me on the channel today. Now when we're looking at magic cards and the long history of this game, there is no way that you are going to remember every single card and every single connection out there to make that perfect deck you've been trying to build. That's why we look cards up. That's why we find out where they're being used, the most popular decks, and the usages of those cards. The bigger the magic sets get, the bigger this game grows over the years and decades to come, the harder this is going to become, which means there will be more variance, more understanding, and a little, a few more loopholes in there that players are going to miss out on, and that is the value of some of these cards. At times, some of these magic cards I'm going to share with you today were very expensive cards, and other times they've been super low and basically worth nothing. But that just shows you how the magic market over time is going to move. No one truly understands everything that is happening in a magic market, you're going to miss things. But trying to stay on top of the cards that are most important to you, staying on top of cards that you know potentially could have value because you recognize some of the wording or some of the key sentences in that, or understanding what Wizards of the Coast is doing and which sets they are trying to promote and which types of card mechanics they want you to play with. This can lead to speculators getting the inside corner edge and helping them win by making you spend more money when they've cornered the market. Well, today we're going to flip that around. I'm going to show you guys some awesome magic cards. We're going to discuss this and hopefully you'll find a few sweet deals in the process. Now, the first card I want to share with everyone is City of Shadows. Now, before we start this little commentary, a reminder that, you know, I have a large position of these. I have like 50 or 60 of them. I'm kind of biased, but let me point out the pros of this card. Number one, it's on the reserve list. It's not coming back around. It's one of the four horsemen sets. It's considered a weaker card, but it's touched around $250. Now, this card does say tap and sacrifice one of your creatures, but remove it from the game instead of placing it in your graveyard. Put a counter on City of Shadows. Okay, so you get to put a counter on for every creature that is sacrificed. So all you need to do is find a way to take control of somebody else's creatures or use tokens to ramp up the mana. And of course, finding ways to untap this and utilize it more than once in one turn to ramp your mana even faster gives you a lot of options and a lot of ways of powering up your deck. Now, tap to add X colorless mana to your mana pool, where X is the number of counters on City of Shadows. Now, I've discussed this card in the past, but understanding that this card's not 250 bucks anymore, and then you can find it for $30 on TCG Player, just lets you know how far a card like this has fallen. Now, why is it fallen? out of disfavor. What's happened? Well, a lot of players turned away from a lot of reserve list cards at the end of 2022, and it's been falling ever since. So that means it's getting cheaper and more affordable with each and every month. Now, a near mint copy or a graded copy is going to run you more money, but in this case, we're just talking about owning a card like this, being able to position it in a deck that you want to use it in, and saving a lot of money at the same time. Now, again, not every player may be looking for a card like this. There may be other things you're trying to build with, but for a $30 card, it's not going to hurt you to buy a copy of this in case it ever shoots back up in value. You're saving yourself time and money by buying it now. Now, our next card. Now, this one's come a long way. This thing has been as high as $600 in some cases. This is in the eye of chaos, and there's a reason I'm pointing this card out. For one blue, two generic, this Enchant World offers you a lot, okay? And as a Legends card, it's insane. It says Enchant World. All instants and interrupts are countered unless their caster pays an additional X, where X is the casting cost of the spell being cast. Now, why do I mention this card? Well, with, with new mechanics like Plot coming along, 
being able to force them to still pay for the casting costs can be an important thing. For all the brutal instant spells we have out there, being able to slow those down, or if you're using a deck that doesn't really use a lot, this could be the edge you need in a commander deck. This could be the edge you need in a vintage legacy deck to make you come out on top. And for $100 and change to get this card near mint, being able to buy beat up copies for 70 bucks isn't something you should be ignoring. Because a card like this and understanding where the value used to be to where it is now, this card is more than just a bargain basement deal. This thing is in the bargain basement bin and it shouldn't be there. It has no right to be there because it can be splashed into so many different color decks because of the one blue mana to get it going. If you're not using instants or interrupts, um, it's a card you need to have. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at our next card. Yeah, not on the reserve list in this case. This is Jace the Mind Sculptor. I'm showing you the World Wake Edition. This thing can be had for around 20 bucks, depending on where you're looking and what version of the copy you're trying to buy. Yeah, it says the average here is $26, but I can find it for less than that, and so can you. But when you look at the card and realize this thing used to be 150 bucks, and when you look how the mighty have fallen and where this card's come from to where it's gone now, you understand it's at a bargain basement deal for sure, but are you going to use it? It says, look at the top card of target player's library. You may put that card on the bottom of that player's library. That's a plus two ability. For zero, you draw three cards, then put two cards from your hand back on top. That's a brainstorm every turn. Minus one, return target creature to its owner's hand. That can be offense or defense. Minus 12, exile all cards from target player's library. Then that player shuffles his or her hand into his or her library. That's an insanely powerful Planeswalker. It reminds you how great they used to be when you see a Jace card like this powered up. So what happened when it fell out of disfavor? What happened is the meta got so fast and so quick that people kind of forgot this card's around, but it still exists and it still has something to offer players depending on what you're trying to build and where you're trying to use it. Sometimes just as a decoy or, or a variance card to throw a player off to what they think you're going to do and the fact that if it gets on the board mid to late game, it's still a threat, means it's not a card that should be ignored. It's a card that should be embraced when it's at that level of pricing. When the pricing is this low, you have nothing to lose. You're going to play with it. You're going to use it. And chances are, it's not getting a reprint for a while. It's going to stand the test of time for a little while, just because the price has fallen so low. Wizards is under no incentive to reprint it with the amount of copies we have hanging out in the market. Now, for our next card, this is a little more a little more janky. Let me take a look here and show you the bubble matrix from Weatherlight. This is a forecasting cost, okay? But it's a $6 card. This is not a big amount of money. When you look at this as the old school artifacts that can fit into every single deck and you recognize that this one says all damage dealt to creatures is reduced to zero. This device was commissioned by the king who desired peace. Unfortunately, the royal artificer was also the king's jester. So it's kind of like a joke. It's kind of a play on words. Hannah the Weatherlight Navigator having a little bit of fun. But understanding that this card is actually brutally powerful when built in the right deck, when you put the right cards together, this is Veteran Bodyguard. That's a 25 cent reserve list card. Do you know what happens when that thing's out and the bubble matrix is there? Well, all damage to your creatures is zero. So if somebody hits you for like a thousand damage, it all gets put to the bodyguard, but then the damage goes to zero. So you actually didn't take any. That's a disgusting combo for $7. $6 for that, a buck for that, and a little bit of money for shipping. The idea that these cards can come around and become more powerful or more highly utilized is something players tend to forget about. Cards like this should not be forgotten. It's sub $10 when it used to be $25. This is a deal. This is a card you should own four of so you never have to buy it again. Remember, reserve list, not coming around. Now, this is Lotus Veil, a weatherlight card. And again, there are actually copies that already exist that are kind of better than this. And I'll share that with you in a second. But the Lotus Veil says, when Lotus Veil comes into play, sacrifice two untapped lands or bury the Lotus Veil. And then it says, add three mana of any one color to your mana pool. Okay, that's an amazing card. And then it says, at what price beauty, right? When you look at the card and recognize what it can do and what players are trying to do right now in Modern Horizons 3, being able to put this out doesn't come into play tapped, right? You have to bury two of your lands and then you can immediately tap for three. You can ask yourself, why would you want two cards to go into your graveyard? Why would you want two land cards to go into your graveyard? Well, there's lots of reasons why you might want that to happen. Using something like Lodestone Bobble in conjunction with this means you could put out that card, sack the two lands, 
put up the Lotus, sack it with one of the mana still floating when you tap that sucker for something else, and then you get to put those two lands back on top of your library, and then draw one of them. There are lots of reasons why this card works, and when you use it with cards like Lodestone Bobble, a $4 card, you're kidding yourself. And by the way, I missed it on last week's Top 10. Lodestone Bobble sold 150 copies, and that was due. It should have been the number one card. I just missed it. I apologize. It sold because of what's happened with that Commander deck, the new Flip It uh, commander deck from uh, Outlaws of Thunder Junction. Just letting you guys know. Now again here, take a look at the Lotus Field. This thing's like a $5 card, but again, it works with Lodestone Bobble. Yes, this thing comes into play tapped, but unlike the Lotus Veil, this thing, it gets hexproof. It's a lot harder to get rid of, and it still gives you that mana. Yes, it comes into play tapped, but you could still use that thing with the uh, with the Lodestone Bobble to bring it all back. Or if you want to, want to ramp up a commander deck, you can have both of these things in there. You can have both inside your deck and just give a beat down on people. And that's something that players always forget about is cards that are cheap aren't worthless. They're amazing. Finding a card like Lotus Veil vale and then a Lotus Field, getting a Lodestone Bobble, you're talking less than 50 bucks for all of it with shipping and stuff. It's crazy. Okay, sorry, let's jump to the next card. This is Deadly Dispute. Now, this is a reprint, and we talked about this a long time ago, that I said when this thing came out for Dungeons & Dragons, I said the amount of boxes that were opened, and this card was actually kind of hard to get, and then when we got to um, Commander uh, Legends Battle for Baldur's Gate, it didn't sell as well, and it was brought up in that box as well. So that meant a card like Deadly Dispute started going up to the $5, $6 level for quite a while, okay? For like a year and a bit, this thing was really spiking up in value. So what happened? Well, it finally got enough reprints that the price came down. Don't forget, this thing says as an additional cast to cast the spell, uh, cost to cast the spell, sacrifice an artifact or creature, and then you draw two cards and create a treasure token. This thing's going to be used for a long time. It's going to be highly utilized, and here they make it just a common. You can find it inside, right? No problem. But it's the idea that this is in a commander deck, right? Not a regular deck. It's not in a regular series right now. But the idea that it's going to be utilized in commander means people need this card. They want this card. And there's not as many copies floating around as people believe there to be. And the fact it's so cheap is amazing. This is like a 70 cent card, okay? You can find it really at an inexpensive level. And then, of course, if you look and see where it used to be, when you look at how the price used to be, you see where it used to, you know, kind of spike at and go down. And it finally fell when Outlaws of Thunder Junction Commander deck came around. But when those Commander decks fall to the wayside, do you think this card's not going back up? Do you think it's not going to recover another 20 or 30%? Is it not going to go up to a $2 card again? It probably will. So you can save yourself a couple of bucks by buying a playset now. Save yourself the grief and the trouble of a card like that. It's something, again, you got to think about. Now, the last card I want to share with you guys today is the Query on Druid, and this is from Visions. This thing's $2.50. It's been as high as, what, 15 bucks? It didn't hold long, okay? And there's reasons why it didn't hold at the time, but there are reasons why you should pay attention to this card more now, okay? When you look at all the new lands that Wizards of the Coast is giving us, all these ramped up power lands, all these ways of the Urza lands, the Urza caves, when you look at the Query on Druid, it says, for that one little bit of mana, this thing's a 1-2 for 3 mana, but it's 1 green. It can be fitting into a lot of decks. It says Summon Druid. It's a 1-2, and of course it has 1 green and tap it. Target land becomes a 2-2 two, two green creature permanently. This land still counts as a land. That is amazing. Any board wipe that affects creatures is going to affect certain lands that you turn into creatures. Remember that, okay? This card can save your life in a commander deck. It gives a target on something other than what you may have planned later in the game. It is insane, okay? Love this card for $2.50. Now, of course, this is just a small cross-section of the thousands of cards that are at a good bargain basement deal right now. Yeah, some are reserve list, some are non reserve list. You have to look around, you have to shop around and understand that this market is constantly changing. Every time Wizards of the Coast drops a bomb of a new set, there is a chance a reserve list card's gonna click and go off. And for a brief moment, it stays really high, and then eventually, that kind of fades. But there is a chance that some of these ones kind of permanently stay higher than they used to be, and that's because that type of deck or that, that synergy stays longer than people expect, and before you know it, supply and demand, the price goes up. Now with newer cards, with reprints, and how Wizards likes to reprint nowadays, we have already seen that they're scaling things back and slowing things down. So the recovery time on some of these cards is going to be shortened. They're actually going to go up in value 
faster than people anticipate. It's not going to take four or five years for a card to recover. It's going to take two or three, maybe even less, depending on the print runs and how players decide to engage with the products. Either way, amazing deals, and I really hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed today's content. Can't wait to see you guys tomorrow with another video. Such a great time. Magic's amazing, and I hope I hope you guys saved some money. I hope you found some good deals you enjoyed. And if you think there's some better deals out there, hey, slam that in the comment section. We've all got to learn, right? Thanks again, guys. We'll see you tomorrow. Hey, guys, a big shout out and thank you to the loyal patrons of the channel. It's because of them that this channel continues to exist. And I want to take a moment to thank each and every one of them. Whether you're one of my patrons, a YouTube membership member who stepped up and donates to this channel every single month, maybe at a live stream, wherever you're doing it, Thanks again for supporting my channel. I look forward to seeing you guys tomorrow with another video. Have a great one. Good deals, man. Good deals. Welcome back. You've made it to the Ramble Jamble. You're at the end, and that's okay. I'm glad you're here. Because with all the deals we've been seeing, and we talked about this on the live stream. You can go back and watch my live stream if you missed it. I realized that I should be sharing more of these deals with the audience. I should let you guys know some of the some of the better deals I find, instead of me just buying them for the Patreon box, for the giveaways, I should probably let you know some of these deals are out there in case you decide to get in on the action in your own fashion. Buy one card, buy ten, maybe you're doing a TCG player order and you decide to add one or two cards on for five bucks, whatever it may be, there's some great deals out there. I want to let you guys in on it, let you guys know what I see out there, and that way I'm kind of sharing the wealth of knowledge. Uh, if you're one of my patrons or YouTube membership members, you can hit me up privately for emails as well. Feel free to do so anytime. You guys know I respond back within that 24-hour period, depending on how crazy it is at work. So thanks again, guys, for being here. Turn your Necronomicon to page 999, because that's a good deal. <laughs> See you guys tomorrow.